Howdy! Welcome to the third annual Columbia Food and Wine Festival. I'm Mike Wine Guy, um, a local wine lover and also somebody who has a little podcast called Ride Between the Wines. Check me out. Uh, obviously this year's festival is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're not able to quite come and talk about the wines quite the same way, but I wanted to give you a little heads up about at least one of the wines you're going to be drinking tonight. So I attached this little video. Please check it out. Uh, otherwise, have an amazing time tonight, and if there's anything that you love, please fill it out on that sheet. Be sure to give the sheet to a server so that you can grab your wines from the gourmet shop next week. Here it goes. Good morning. Happy brunch. I'm going to speak just a minute about the rosé in front of you, which is made by Maison Louis Jadot. So it is a 100% Gamay in Burgundy, where Louis Jadot is Louis Jadot. Um, the white wines are generally Chardonnay, the red wines are generally Pinot Noir, and if you go a little further south all the way to Beaujolais, which is the most far south region of Burgundy, um, you find uh, Gamay, which is the red grape, which is what this is made from. It's very crisp, it's very refreshing, I'm sure that you will love it. Uh, I'm going to put two clips after this and uh, a timestamp so you can see where everything is if you want to jump it around. One of them is from my audio edition podcast with Erica Taylor, who's talking a little bit about um, Maison Louis Jadot, so you can learn about the history there. Uh, and then the next one is with Anton Coley, who's specifically from Maison Louis Jadot, uh, and he talks a little bit about Burgundy and some other fun stuff. So uh, skip around, uh, enjoy it, have a wonderful morning. Awesome. Well then. Let's start with Louis Jadot then. Let's, that sounds like a great segue into some of the amazing French wines you have. Yes. What would you like to know? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great question. So, so who is Louis Jadot? So, who was the first Louis Jadot, so I guess? Louis Jadot was uh, a gentleman from Belgium and uh, back in the, the 1800s and he moved to France and purchased the first, his first property in 1826 or 29. I probably should get this. Yeah. It's a long time ago. I think it's a three-year difference. I think. We'll yeah, I think we're good. I think <laughs> give or take. Plus, was it in plus Burgundy? Or minus. Yeah, and it was in Bone actually. Oh, okay. And that vineyard um, is our famed uh, Clodeur Soul Vineyard, and uh, it was the first, the first property that was acquired by Louis Jadot. Um, Louis Jadot Winery became uh, a thing in, in 1859, and uh, he was a negociant, but also, like I said, uh, acquiring vineyards too along the process. Is that, now, so I've been to the Louis Jadot Winery in Bone, is that yeah. still in the same? So where the winery is now is just outside of this, the town of Bone. Uh -huh. The original winery was in uh, the city center of Bone. So not that far away, just Perfect. A, a couple kilometers. Got it. Hi, the wine guys, right here, bro. Yeah. Hey, really? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are back in the car, uh, and I have Antoine Jolie. Antoine. Antoine. Collet. Collet. Typical Collet. French, as you know. Very French. Because you know? you're born in Champ Champagne. Champagne. Yes, yes correct. Perfect. Born in a bubble. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what's important to know is with Maison Louis Jadot, with a lot of people had questions and they always think that the wine is sold everywhere and it's massive production, it's actually not. I mean, the only five wines that really are what we call our bread and butter is really the Macon Village, Beaujolais Village, Puy Fusse, Chardonnay, and Pinot Noir, which that is sold in a lot of places. But unfortunately, the label of Jadot is recognized and could be confusing because some of the Grand Cru and Premier Cru, they look alike, so you have to know your village and your little appellations. Um, so the wine that we're presenting today, you know, they're mostly domain wines, which there's about 70 different domain wines at Maison Louis Jadot. Uh, and today we cover about close to 600 uh, acres of vineyards. So we also, the producer who has the largest library wine uh, in terms of vintage, uh, we have Bouchard Perifis, which we go back in our cellar to 1845. All right, so we're back in the car, and um, I just really interrupted Antoine because I was like, no, nope, let's talk about this on film. So, so the story of Burgundy and how we got all of the regions, I imagine is a very long story, but if you can give me like a, 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 a Cliff Notes version of it. A diagram be, of it. A di yes, yeah. a little diagram would be great. Well, you know, it's uh, not easy to explain, but uh, make the story short. You know, the monk were making the wines for some of the kings, and the kings had designated area uh, in terms of Burgundy. Um, the date, I believe, uh, was back in the early, 
or late 1700 uh, when that happened and officially done in uh, early 1800 so okay. um, you know of course the designation of the appellation of Premier Cru and Grand Cru were done right after that but the one cool thing that we need to know is that you know we have the Hospice de Bone where we do all those auction barrels every year uh, but the Hospice de Bone was originally an hospital and for the people who were sick at the time but didn't have any money that were poor but had land uh, on their own would pay the hospital by sharing or giving a piece of their land uh, through the Hospice de Bone and that was kind of a ripoff because you know you would need to get Get healthcare done, and you were losing kind of your, your land. Your yeah. land. So, but that was kind of the time, the way they they did it. Sure.